Hey, young people. I'll probably post this on Think Like a Dog channel also since I don't post there much. I've been chewed up by a lot of dogs and bit by a lot of dogs, handled thousands of dogs in the military. I'm telling you, dogs are best restricted and stopped by grabbing their neck. You usually have to just sacrifice your weak arm and then grab the dog by the windpipe. Most dogs don't bite and let go. They want to bite and hold. And this could have been stopped and prevented a lot quicker. It amazes me how ineffective this so-called mom is to protect her child. So pretty much if mom would have been there, this dog would have killed this kid without this guy. This male testosterone guy willing to use aggressive violence to defend himself and the helpless. You know, all the mean males that are... Uh, they're bad right now by women who both left. But anyway, I digress. Here we go. So this guy is beating this dog, and dogs' pain tolerance are really high. That's why they use them to attack people, because if you hit them, a lot of times it doesn't stop them. So this guy is beating the dog, but he's not controlling the damage part of the dog. The dog's head and mouth is the business damage end. You need to grab and control that. And this guy is beating it. So he never controls the head. So every time he pushes him off, the dog goes back. He grabs the tail. And anytime you grab or pull on a dog when they're biting, you do more damage. It rips and drags the person. I know this from personal experience. We were doing a demonstration. And the handler I was working kicked my leg. The dog thought it was aggressive, so he grabbed my leg. And the handler started yanking him back, trying to pull him off my leg. And I had to turn around and go, stop pulling, reach down, and choke the dog out. We call it choke out. You put your hand on their windpipe, and when you squeeze their windpipe, they, it triggers that gag reflex, and they open their mouth to let go, and then you pull them off. And this guy's grabbing the dog by the tail. He's trying. He's panicking. He doesn't know, but that's why these videos are good to learn from. So now he grabs the kid and pulls the kid away. Again, doing more damage. He's ripping and tearing. He's not stopping the dog's mouth. So he gets him up. That's good. Had he picked the dog up here by the neck of the dog and swung the dog around, he could have slammed him into a car. He could have spun him until he got to this tree and broke the dog's back when he spun around and, hit the, and, and break the dog back so he couldn't chase him. But he's trying to protect the kid, and now the dog is going to turn his aggression on him while mom just abandons and walks away. So now he starts getting aggressive with the person. So he puts the kid up top. Good move here. Remove the kid so the dog can't get it, and then he can deal with the dog. But he never grabs the dog's throat and head. See this punching and running and pulling? That just elevates the dog's prey-kill instinct to where he wants to chase. I mean, that's exactly how we train dogs to attack people. We run from them. We tease them and we run. We come in and as soon as they bark, we run away. We build their confidence. We work with their natural chase, prey-kill instincts. Anytime you run from a predator, they're going to chase you. So he's trying to kick again. Never grabbing. Dog gets him on the ground. It's just this panic response of dogs is, uh, and it's all natural. I'm not saying this guy's bad or evil. Somebody's going to come here. Man, you guys saved the kid. You're still, shut up. Trying to educate you. You don't want to learn and get the hell out of here and shut up. This dog could have been controlled much quicker and easier by grab, grabbing his neck. You need to focus on the neck and mouth. And if you don't, you'll end up like this guy. So he does jump up here, but the dog is still running around and is not ineffective. When you grab a dog by the neck, uh, a lot of times they will scratch you a little bit trying to run and paw and push away. So if you spin in a circle, centrifugal force keeps the dog's weight to the outside, keeps your grip on his neck, and you just keep spinning till you can get to a wall, a tree, a car, something to slam the dog. Another thing you can do while you're spinning is you get to a fence and you spin and spin and throw the dog over the fence. If you got a room, you spin and spin and as you spin around, 
you let the dog go, he will fly, and then you can shut a door. Grabbing the neck and spinning is a good dog defense for any dog attacking. Um, it seems pretty simple to me because I've experienced it and done it and been bit several times. So experience is the best teacher. Hopefully you learn something. And um, I forgot what happens here. I don't know if the dog jumps or... Uh... Mom's pretty much gone to safety. Rick, they're just as strong as men and we should hire them to be police and military and... Yeah, okay. Keep Keep up with those idiot lies and somebody will believe you. All right, so I guess that's the end. So the kid's still screaming. Look, dog bites hurt. They're probably all bleeding. A lot of puncture wounds, uh, you know, treatment of puncture wounds are different. Don't stitch up a puncture wound. Don't let a doctor stitch it up. You got to let it ooze and heal from the inside out. If anything, they'll pack it. And then you change the packing, you know, every few days to remove the healing from the inside so it can scab up from the inside and grow out. But anyway, dog attack one-on-one. We'll end that there.